Victoria was rocked by yet another earthquake yesterday morning at around 3.48am. The location that the earthquake occurred at is unsurprising, as it's dominated by a multitude of fault lines that were formed some 380 to 400 million years ago during an orogeny known as the Tabarabaran orogeny. This orogeny is responsible for forming many of the goldfields in eastern Victoria, including those in the Woods Point area. So why did an earthquake occur here? To understand this, we need to go back in time to the events that buckled and folded the land, leading to tremendous volcanic activity and to the major fractures and fault lines in the earth that exist all the way up to present day. To start, let's clarify what an orogeny is. An orogeny is a mountain building event and a Tabarabaran orogeny in particular was related to a subduction event that occurred along the eastern margin of the Gondwana supercontinent during the Paleozoic era. It was driven by the subduction of oceanic plates beneath the continental crust of eastern Gondwana. This orogeny played a vital role in shaping the geology of southeastern Australia, contributing to the development of mountain ranges and influencing sedimentation patterns. It set the stage for subsequent geological events in the region. As the oceanic lithosphere descended into the mantle, intense pressure and friction generated heat, leading to the melting of mantle materials and to the formation of volcanic arcs. The compressive forces from the subduction event resulted in significant deformation of the crust, causing folding, faulting and the metamorphism of existing rock formations. The intense pressure and heat transformed sedimentary and volcanic rocks into metamorphic rocks like schists and gneisses. The orogeny led to the development of thrust faults and tight folds creating complex geological structures. These features are indicative of the intense compressive forces at play during the orogeny. The subduction related melting also led to the intrusion of granitic bodies within the crust. These igneous intrusions are a significant aspect of the region's geology and are often associated with mineralization. The structural features created by the Tabarabaran orogeny provided pathways for hydrothermal fluids, leading to the concentration of mineral deposits, especially gold. But it didn't only do this. Located in an area known as a back arc basin lies the massive Cerberian caldera, the supervolcano that roared to life during the late Devonian. This massive caldera, which is visible on satellite maps, owes its existence to the Tabarabaran orogeny, which provided the melting necessary to fuel the enormous magma chamber that once churned beneath the Cerberian caldera. It also fueled many other large volcanoes and several other smaller but notable calderas during this time. If you're interested, I've made a few videos on the magmatics of ancient Victoria. Unfortunately, they were recorded when I had a rubbish mic, but they are still full of interesting information. I'll leave the link to a few of these videos in the description. Along with volcanic eruptions that occurred at surface level were the deposition of massive magma chambers known as batholiths that never made it to the surface to erupt. One of these massive batholiths exists in Borbor Village, Nuji State Forest, Benak State Forest, Yarra State Forest and Black Range State Forest to name a few. The Cerberian Caldera is an example of one of these batholiths that erupted onto the surface. You can see just how large these magmatic bodies are in geological maps. If they made it to the surface, there would have been planet-altering eruptions, similar to how the Cerberian caldera altered the climate of the planet when it erupted. So the earthquake that occurred yesterday morning mobilized ancient fault lines that are still in motion today. The reason for their movement has been attributed to the geological processes that are occurring in New Zealand, which is transferring energy through the crust of the Earth, beneath the Tasman Sea, all the way to Victoria. As you can see, numerous earthquakes have occurred in this region in the past 10 years. They are represented by the small grey-white dots. It's likely that we will see many more earthquakes occurring in and around this area in time. This is just one of many that still occur in the Australian landmass. I hope you found this video as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started the second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time indigenous Australians walked the continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon, or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel. 